guys? So I am really excited to talk about this knife. This is the CRKT Dactyl. All right, I believe this was showcased back in 2017, so it's nothing super new. A lot of you guys might have seen this before, maybe you own them. Um, but this was my newest acquisition for one of my multiple collections. One thing that I do love to collect and keep are weird knives. Okay, specifically folders, because I like different types of mechanisms, different locks. People can get really creative. There's been just dozens and dozens of different really strange knives you know, over the last hundred years or so. Um, and this is definitely a very strange knife. So, this uh, sells between $35 and $40 or so. I think there's a couple different coatings or different, uh, I maybe call them colors. This one's just the 5150, I believe it's just an all bead blasted design. And just as an offshoot, if you have bead blasted knives um, and you live in a, you know, rough climate as far as humidity, uh, if you live by salt water or anything like that, you should really take care of them. Bead blasting is one of the hardest finishes for steel to prevent rust, regardless of the steel, because when you bead blast metal, it opens up the pores, which makes it more susceptible to like surface rust and things like that. So any kind of bead blasted blades or anything, if you do live in a, like I said, a tough environment for rust, you should lightly oil your stuff. So anyway, uh, so let me show you how this works and we'll get more into specs and stuff like that. So right off the bat, you can see there's no pocket clip. All right, it's a very light knife coming in at 2.4 ounces. All right, it's basically just a frame, a couple little metal parts, and our blade, which also has cutouts, which is very visible. In the closed position here, there's no way to access that edge, so you're not gonna cut yourself or anything. All right, this uh, piece on top here is your lock. All right, but before we even get to that, we're gonna talk about this. This little piece here is your carabiner, okay? And when I first got this knife, I purposely did not watch any videos. I didn't go to any websites. I actually saw a picture of it somewhere, knew I wanted it, and then once I got it, I spent about 25 minutes trying to figure this out on my own because I thought it was fun. It was like if someone hands you like a little wooden puzzle or something like that, you know, of course you could cheat and figure out how to do it, but you want to figure it out on your own. That's the fun part, right? 25 minutes it took me to even realize that that was the last thing I discovered, that this was a carabiner. And it turns out it's also a bottle opener. All right, but that's how you can uh, carry this on a belt loop. It could be... You know, molly strap on your bag or whatever or on your pants uh, then obviously it closes back up all right so the bottle opener and the carabiner hook no pocket clip all right so this piece here actually locks when it's down it's locked which it is right now right so you're not able to move that blade to unlock it you just pull up it kind of clicks clicks down clicks up there is a little bit of play in these parts i guess it would have to be just by design um, and then once it is unlocked you push this down now, if you look at the frame here, because the frame of the knife is just this U for all intent purposes, even though it's not quite a U, there's some squiggles there. But when you push that, you can see it pivots, all right? And it pushes that frame away. So this is like one big piece of, of uh, spring steel. So it pushes it away. Once you do that, then you're able to rotate the blade out of the frame. Now it goes either direction, all right? So whatever you're most comfortable with, depending on your grip, it goes either direction. And once it's straight, it clicks back all right so now it is locked and there's actually no play at all up down left right anywhere it locks really solid all right once it's open you could slide this piece back up to lock it further so you cannot unlock the knife all right unlocking it is the same thing once it's the piece is actually unlocked <laughs> it's hard to explain because i'm you're unlocking it to unlock it that's a hard way to uh, describe something but yeah you're unlocking it in order to use this to close the blade and let's just say that okay so locked unlocked pulled down and open locked again so locked in the open position all right so um obviously you can see our carabiner also functions as a finger hole so you have an extreme grip on this if you're holding this and let's say you're using this in a defensive situation don't know why you would definitely way on the bottom of the list of great defensive options um, but any knife that you can put your finger through you'd have to take your finger off completely in order to let go of that knife all right obviously you don't have to do that you could choke up on this which is really nice there's a huge deep finger choil so you can get a lot of control or you can come up with a pinch grip and just all this mess goes behind you so a lot of options as far as actually using it i do like this it just feels very comfortable this finger choil let's call it um, your middle finger does rest very nicely in that and it's just Creates a really nice grip. All right, inverse grip, same thing, just you be your pinky, save your pointer finger. 
Now, as far as our blade, we have a Warncliffe style blade, lots of cutouts here, as you can see, just to make it a little bit lighter. Um, as far as cutouts and blades, it's usually for that. It's for making the entire package a little bit lighter, but also aesthetics. When you actually start like cutting a lot of stuff, obviously things get stuck in there, so it's not a great thing for performance. But I'm not worried about performance. The blade steel on here is a 420J2. Now, listen carefully, because you will not hear me say this often, because I'm very open-minded, and I appreciate all walks of life when it comes to steel. 420J2 is a junk steel to use for a blade. Most uh, liners are 420J2 stainless. Okay, just to give you perspective, all right, if you have a liner lock in your pocket or something, that liner on both sides, including your lock side, is probably 420J2. All right, so it, it comes sharp, and you can slice things with it, it will not hold an edge, okay? Very quickly, it'll get dull. But that's not why you'd buy this knife. This is not your go-to EDC. This is not your knife you're gonna rely on at work. This is a knife for your collection. This is a knife to hand to a knife guy and say, hey, or figure this one out. If they haven't seen it before, it'll take them a little while to figure out the mechanism, how it works and stuff. This is just your conversation piece. It is a super cool knife, even though it's probably one of the least functional. This blade, as far as actual usage, is probably not even on par with like the Ozark Trail $4 knives you get from Walmart. So real quick, let me throw you some, uh, some specs for the people who care. Three inches on that blade. Again, it's a 420J2 blade. I don't say that very often, but anyway, uh, two inches of it is sharpened. And a real quick side note, when you talk about like state limits, like let's say you live in a certain state in the US and you're allowed to have a blade length of three inches or four inches, the blade is not the sharpened part. It's the entire metal, for all intent and purposes, that are sticking out past the handle. So in other words, if this was all dull and it was a half inch that was sharpened, the blade would still be three inches long, okay? Because that's what you can stab into someone. So just from a legal standpoint, that's this is all blade. doesn't matter if it's sharp or not, all right? But there's an actual two inch cutting edge, all right? Um, overall, 6.8 inches. Again, 2.4 ounces, extremely uh, lightweight. And closed, it is 4.3 inches, all right? Just super, super cool, super innovative. I just absolutely love this. I don't, I don't necessarily think I'd want one that's you know in a better steel. Because you might think like, oh, it's a pretty cool design. I'd like to carry that. I'd like to have it in 154CM or D2, whatever flavor you like as far as steels go. But I don't. This is a novelty knife. This is 100% show off to your friends. It doesn't matter how well it cuts. No one's going to grab this and start cutting stuff with it. They're going to grab it, and they're going to look at it, and they're going to figure out how to open it. It's like a puzzle. It's awesome. As far as one hand opening, uh, limited time on this. It's not that hard, even when it's locked here. You can see there is jimping, texturing all throughout. This entire piece obviously has to be manipulated in all kinds of ways, so it is well designed and that it's easy. One-handed here, you can uh, unlock it by pushing forward. All right, as far as opening it, I keep the blade away, just like this being righty. You push down and kind of manipulate like that. So open it. Closing is a lot easier, at least for me, for right-handed. Push in, I flip that down, and then use my thumb to, to suck it in. I guess if I can do it this way, now nah, it's still more cumbersome. All right, closing goes that way towards me, opening goes away from me, just because my hand's open, and my fingers are on the back. And of course you can lock it once it's open. So yeah, I mean, you can manipulate this and open and close it one-handed. Pretty darn cool though. Really, really weird, and I love weird. So that is the CRKT Dactyl. It's light, it's weird, it's affordable at 35 to 40 bucks, and I love it. And it's kind of weird for me to say that. Literally the worst blade steel I've used this year. The worst performing knife is probably one of my favorite knives of the year, just because I like weird. You know, are you with me? Do you like weird? So that's it guys. The CRKT Dactyl, I dig it, I really do. And again, this is a great example of CRKT just showing up and, and kicking butt in the knife scene. Not because they're making the best knives in the world, not because they're making the sharpest knives in the world, they're making some of the coolest knives in the world. Just innovation is there. And that's why I will always love CRKT. I have, a, I have something in my heart for them always. And people will look crap on them and say, oh, the, the steel's cheap and it gets dull easy. Yeah, well, learn to sharpen your knives, that's not a problem. But they just make so many affordable knives for people getting into the knife scene that just want to try some weird things or different designs and they don't have a huge budget for it. 
CRKT all the way. I just, I love them. I've always appreciated the company for that. I've had so many different knives. If you type in on YouTube, Cutlery Lever CRKT, you'll see all the past designs that were just weird that I love. The Rolock, the, the Fulcrum, you know, very similar to this, the Snaplock. That's another one that's on my radar, you know, to eventually get. They just have really cool, interesting, innovative designs, and I love it. And they're always affordable. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys have an awesome day. Of course, you have thoughts, feelings, you know, want to tell me what you have for breakfast, write it down below, and I'll see you tomorrow. Take care.